and welcome to the Orthodox View, where we discuss latest religious news from an Orthodox Christian perspective. I'm your host, Philip Champion. Today we're filming from a temporary studio, so please try not to pay much attention to it. A couple of months ago, we spoke about one of the persecuted Orthodox Christian bishops, Metropolitan Jonathan of Tulchin and Bratislav who was on trial in Ukraine and had previously been stripped of his Ukrainian citizenship. In particular, we mentioned that Vladika Jonathan was seriously ill. Well, a few days ago, Metropolitan Jonathan was sentenced to five years imprisonment and the confiscation of property for various supposed crimes against the state by the Vinitsa city court. He was found guilty of crimes under four articles of the Ukrainian Criminal Code, he was incriminated in actions aimed at a forceful change or overthrow of the constitutional system and assuming power, as well as encroachment on the territorial integrity of Ukraine. The accusations are based on leaflets that were allegedly found at the Metropolitan's apartment during the police search. Needless to say, Metropolitan Jonathan has repeatedly denied all charges against him and will file an appeal against the clearly illegal verdict of the Vinitsa city court. His defense also pointed out that there is no evidence that leaflets which were found at his apartment had anything to do with the Metropolitan himself. The video recording which took place during the investigative action confirmed the fact that those main pieces of evidence were planted during the search. And accordingly, the witnesses present at the search did not see the place with those pieces of evidence. The accusation is based on assumptions that Metropolitan Jonathan allegedly personally made those leaflets, although according to the investigation's position, they were produced by a printing method and the investigation could not establish when and by whom they were made and how they ended up with Metropolitan Jonathan. However, the investigation asserts the guilt of the bishop. It is fair to say that the verdict of the Vinitsa city court had shocked the entire Orthodox Church, and Metropolitan Jonathan had immediately started to receive letters of support from multiple Orthodox hierarchs from all over the world. In particular, his Beatitude Anastasius, Archbishop of Tirana and all Albania, sent to Metropolitan Jonathan of Tulchin and Bratislav a letter expressing support for him during today's severe trials. Here's a quotation from that letter. With the deepest sorrow, we follow the painful trials of your beloved eminence and your chosen flock. We participate in your suffering and to the extent of our capabilities, we share where appropriate our testimony about the atrocities against the pious Orthodox Holy Clergy, the devout people, as well as the renowned sacred places in Ukraine. On the 9th of August, Metropolitan Hilarion of Budapest in Hungary sent a letter to the Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban drawing his attention to the fate of Metropolitan Jonathan. Metropolitan Hilarion has asked the Hungarian Prime Minister to do everything possible to draw attention of the international community to the unprecedented decision of the Vinitsa city court and to achieve the release of the Venerable Hierarch, if not for some other considerations, then for the considerations of humanitarian nature. He pointed out that Metropolitan Jonathan is 74 years old and is suffering from diabetes in a severe form. Therefore, for him, the deprivation of liberty means nothing but the death sentence. As you well know, Metropolitan Jonathan is not the only Orthodox bishop who is facing persecution in his own country. Recently, criminal proceedings had opened against Metropolitan Luke of Zaporozhye, Similar cases against His Eminence Metropolitan Pavel of Vyshgorod, the abbot of the Kiev Caves Lavra, and His Eminence Metropolitan Theodosia of Cherkasy are also being pursued. Therefore, we're asking all our viewers to please continue to pray for Metropolitan Jonathan and for the entire long-suffering Ukrainian Orthodox Church headed by His Beatitude Metropolitan Anufri of Kiev and all Ukraine. In the Orthodox view, we strongly believe that if we truly stand for the religious freedom, then it would be impossible for us to turn the blind eye to what is going on. And I am sure that you, our viewers, think the same. His Eminence, Metropolitan Daniel of Tokyo in all Japan, the head of the autonomous Japanese Orthodox Church of the Moscow Patriarchate, had reposed in the Lord on August 10th at the age of 84. He served the Lord in clerical orders for 54 years 
including 23 as primate. The future Metropolitan was born on September 5, 1938, in Toyohashi, in Japan. In 1965, he graduated from the Tokyo Theological Seminary and, in 1968, from St. Vladimir's Seminary in New York, with a master's degree in theology. He was ordained to the deaconate in November 1969 and to the priesthood in January 1972. On August 20th, 1999, he was tonsured a monk with the name Daniel in honor of St. Daniel of Moscow at the Holy Trinity St. Sergius Lavra. On October 6th, he was elected Bishop of Kyoto and was consecrated to the Episcopacy on November 14, 1999, in the Epiphany Cathedral in Moscow. The service was led by His Holiness Patriarch Alexei II of Moscow and all Rus. On May 14, 2000, he was elected the Metropolitan of Tokyo and all Japan. May his memory be eternal. And on August 11, 2023, in connection with the demise of Metropolitan Daniel of Tokyo in all Japan, Archbishop Seraphim of Sendai was elected as locum tenens of the Metropolitan See of the Japanese Orthodox Church in accordance with the statute of that church. And now back to Africa. Seven students got baptized at a growing Orthodox school in Kenya. According to Orthodox Christian, Father Antipas Odiambo of the Nguanda Orthodox Christian School and Community Outreach Center in Nairobi, Kenya, reports that he has received seven more youths into the Orthodox faith from his student body during a recent baptismal liturgy, increasing the number of converts to his flock coming from the school. It is also reported that along with these baptisms, Father Antipas received a generous donation from St. Mary of Egypt Orthodox Church in Roswell, Georgia, that will build a much-needed fence around the 10-acre property that was purchased with donated funds in 2020. Here's what Father Antipas says about the land. The land was acquired to develop and establish a mission center here in Kenya, in my village where we hope to establish an orphanage, school, a chapel, and a health center. We also wish to begin growing crops and keeping livestock for sustainability. And we pray that God will send us help to accomplish the work. We are grateful for the donation that has been graciously given to us, and we are planning to travel to my home village to begin the work on the land we acquired a few years ago by the grace of God. Father Antipas and his staff of 10 teachers will travel to Western Kenya this week, to build the fence themselves, showing a great desire and ability for establishing a self-sustaining parish and mission. If you feel like supporting Father Antipas and his staff in their ministry, we shall put a link with all the details in the description below. Meanwhile, that's all for today. Thank you for watching and see you next time on the Orthodox View.